negative 3 over the square root of 10. Opposite over the hypotenuse. Can anyone give us cosine? <coughs> Can anyone give us tangent? Over negative 1. Because tangent in the third quadrant has to be positive. Cotangent. Right. Secant. But negative. Negative the square root of 10 over 3. And, uh, I'm sorry, that was negative 1 over over 1. So negative the square root of 10. And cosecant? Perfect. That's it. I would like to move on to the next set. Please choose. Evaluate the trig function at the quadrant angle or state the that the expression is undefined. Okay. Before, before we look at that, I would like to remind you something around the circle, the unit circle. Ready? Okay, here's the unit circle. This is the x-axis and this is the y-axis. And I'm not talking about angles right now. I'm only talking about this point on the unit circle. Can anyone give us the coordinates of this point and then this one and then this one and then this one? One comma, excellent. This one, comma, good. This point, perfect. And this point, very good. As we know, on the unit circle, for any angle alpha, what is this piece? What does this represent if the unit circle has a radius 1, in other words, is a unit circle. What does this represent always? This height, the sine. Very good. So that piece, from this point till this point, this piece is sine alpha. Now, can anyone tell us what is this piece? What does this piece equal to? I don't know what I did with my... Okay, here it is. From this point till this point, this piece. This is cosine cosine alpha. Very good. Excellent. So can anyone now give us again the coordinates of this point? P. It has x, but how much is x? Cosine alpha. And it has y, but how much is y? So now, if I ask you, uh, give me uh, cosine uh, pi. First of all, where will you look? Right here. The first coordinate is cosine or sine? Right. So how much is cosine pi? I'm going to ask now uh, sine 3 pi over 2. Where is 3 pi over 2? 1 pi over 2, 2 pi over 2, 3 pi over 2. So it's right here. So sine is the first coordinate or the second coordinate? Good, so how much is sine? What if I ask now tangent pi over 2? You have to say, wait a minute. I know that tangent pi over 2 is uh, sine pi over 2 over cosine pi over 2. How much is sine pi over 2? 1. How much is cosine pi over 2? Uh-oh. What does this mean? Undefined. So now we're ready to choose. Anything you want from 19 through 16? Fourteen. Before you choose, I'll choose fourteen. Cosine pi over two. Uh, no, I'm I'm sorry, it's cosine three pi over two. Where will you look? Okay, cosine is the first coordinate or the second coordinate? Of course it's the first coordinate because cosine is measured on the x-axis and sine is measured on the y-axis. So it's the first coordinate. So how much is cosine 3 pi over 2? Zero. Uh, what about um, secant pi? 
and you have to say, you never told me to remember this, and I, I specifically say do not memorize this, but you have to remember that secant pi is 1 over cosine pi. And cosine is the first coordinate. I look at pi, what does that equal to? So I have 1 divided by negative 1. What is secant pi then? Negative, negative 1. Bless you. Please choose a problem from 19 through 22. One. 20 is good. So here's what we are told now. Tangent theta is less than 0. Sine theta is less than 0. Find the quadrant. Find the quadrant for theta. Okay. Again, what did we say? Where do we measure sine? Do we measure it on the x-axis or we measure it on the y-axis? Right, because it's the opposite. Just remember it's opposite. So, uh, which, which means that the top of the circle is positive sine or negative? Positive, right? Because it's measured on the y-axis. And the bottom of the circle, quadrants 3 and 4, sine will be negative. What about cosine? Cosine is measured on the x-axis. This side of the, of the circle is cosine positive, and this sign of the circle is cosine. That's all you need to remember. I am told that sine is negative. Which quadrants will have sine negative? Yes. Good. So now I'm also, so I took care of this. This is done, discussed. But I'm also told tangent is negative. Now, I have to think in which quadrants is tangent negative. Definitely where they have opposite signs, where sine and cosine have opposite signs. If they have the same sign, tangent will be positive because I have negative over negative. But if one is positive and the other one is negative or vice versa, the top is negative and the bottom is positive, then tangent will be negative. So now let's look around the circle. Where will x and y have opposite signs? Two and four. I have to choose the quadrant in which both conditions are fulfilled. Therefore, tangent, I'm sorry, theta must be in, in the fourth quadrant. <coughs> One more time. Sine, we are told, is negative. And I know sine is measured on the y-axis. Positive sine is 1 and 2. Negative sine is 3 and 4. Uh, now I'm told tangent is less than 0. So if this is positive, and this is negative, and cosine positive here and negative here, then there are two quadrants in which they have opposite signs. In the second and the fourth. So now I'm looking, here is one is negative, but the other one is positive. Here, this is negative, but that is positive. So I have to choose the only quadrant in which both conditions are fulfilled. Okay, let's choose one more. Anything you want to illustrate the same thing one more time? 22. What uh, does 22 say? Okay. Cotangent theta is greater than 0. Secant theta is less than 0. Good. Looks very difficult. No, it's not. First thing, cotangent is positive. Cotangent is cosine of a sine. A ratio is positive when both are positive or both are negative. So where both have the same sign. In which quadrant both have the same sign? Right. So cotangent is positive here and here. Because here they are both positive, they will give us a positive. Here they are both negative, they will give us a positive. So I took care of this. Now secant. I know that secant is 1 over cosine. 1 over cosine. Where cosine is negative, secant will be negative because it's only 1 over the same number, right? So where is cosine negative? Yes. 
I have to choose the only quadrant that has both conditions fulfilled. Say it again. Uh, secant is negative in two and three. I'm sorry. Okay. Because cosine is positive here and um, negative here. One more time. So secant theta equals one over cosine theta. For this to be negative, cosine is positive here and negative here. Therefore, secant is negative here and positive here, like cosine. Always secant has the same sign with cosine. If cosine is positive, secant is positive. If cosine is negative, secant is negative. So therefore, I have to select the quadrant in which both conditions are fulfilled, and I will say theta is in the third quadrant. Do you think we need another, or we can move on? Move on. Please, uh, let's choose from the next set. Um, my department selected only between 23 and 25, but I can do any problem with you that you want. So they are choosing only sine and cosine. So if we're given tangent, they don't want us to strain our brains. So let's just choose among 23 through 26. Okay, let's start with 23. In 23, they're saying here, the problem is giving us cos sine theta, which is negative 3 over 15. And we're told that theta is in the third quadrant. Very important piece of information. Is there, is there negative 3 over 5? Oh. Thank you. I said I can't get away with any. And if your professor says, no, I'm, I'm kidding, I'm kidding, I'm kidding. Thank you so much. It would have been more difficult with 15 because we can take the square root from it. And this will be much easier. Thank you. You make my life easier. Okay, so I am told that theta is in the third quadrant. So it starts in on the uh, positive side of the x-axis. And the uh, terminal side is somewhere in the third quadrant. So this is angle theta. Good. Now, how much is this piece? And how much is this piece? You could do it that way. I prefer doing it in a different way. Okay, I'm told that cosine equals negative 3 over 5. I know that the angle is in the third quadrant. Can anyone give us the sign of these functions? Don't say anything just yet. Allow me to write them down. Okay. So I know that, sign, uh, that uh, the angle is in the third quadrant. Cosine is given to us just the sign. I want to es establish the sign of sign. Will it be positive or negative? Remember, sign is measured on the y-axis. Positive, negative. So what is the sign of sign in the third quadrant? Since these two are negative, what will be the sign of tangent? What will be the sign of cotangent? It's 1 over tangent. Good. Secant is 1 over cosine. And cosecant is 1 over sine. OK? Now this is just the signs of each. But now I have to find the number. But I wanted to establish the sign first of each trig function. Good. Now I have a very important trig identity, which is sine squared theta plus cosine squared theta equals 1. I have cosine. But I want to find sine. What should I do in this equation to find sine? Careful. I have to move. Yes. yes. Sine squared theta equals 1 minus cosine squared theta. So I take the square root on both sides. I know I should write plus or minus the square root of 1 minus this squared, which is 9 over 25. But I know this because I already established it. So then I'm not going to say plus or minus, but what I'm going to say is sine theta equals. 
I already established the sign. I'd spend time on establishing the sign. Minus 25 minus 9 is 16. The square of 16 over 25. So therefore, sine theta is negative 4 fifths. That's why I didn't want 15 in there. I really wanted 5. Okay, so I have sine. I don't care about anything else. I don't need to know any of this. I know tangent. How much is tangent? Yes, so 4 over 5 divided by 3 over 5, which is 4 over 3. Cotangent. 3 over 4. Secant. And cosecant. Once I have sine and cosine, I don't care where what happens, and I establish the signs, of course. But it doesn't really matter. I only need to establish the sign for these two, and the rest will follow. Okay, let's choose one more. Twenty-six. Twenty-six it is. Uh, cosine is given now. Uh, since we're given cosine in the first one, let's do uh, twenty-five, which gives us sine this time because it's the same thing with that one so sine theta equals 5 over 13 and theta is in the second quadrant so all I need to know is cosine and then the rest will follow I don't even have to do all that work So I know that the angle is in the second quadrant wherever. I don't care where, but it, it, the terminal side is in the second quadrant. So this is the angle theta. And I know that sine theta equals 5 over 13. And I know that sine square theta plus cosine square theta equals 1. From here, I want to find which one. Right, so I have cosine squared equals 1 minus sine squared. I take the square root from both sides. I write plus or minus, but I know that only one can happen because cosine cannot be plus or minus in one particular quadrant. It's either plus or minus. So now I know that cosine is measured on the x-axis. What is the sign of cosine in the second quadrant? negative. So then I'll say no. Just cosine theta equals negative. The square root of 1 minus 25 over 169. Because I have to square that. Then 169 minus 25 is 144. Cosine theta is negative the square root of 144 over 169. So then cosine theta equals negative 12 over 13. That's all I need. And the rest will follow in a blink. Tangent, cotangent, secant, cosecant. Tangent. Five over twelve, but minus. Yes, negative five twelve. This over this is negative five over twelve. Cotangent, I don't have to think. It's not 12 or 13, I'm sorry. Negative 13 over 5. Good. Secant. Cosecant. I hope you agree that this is easier than graphing rational functions with asymptotes and domain. Yeah. Okay. Good. Um, find the reference angle. 35 through 49. Uh, let's look at uh, 42. And we are given 5 pi over 4. We're asked to find the reference angle. We did that last time. I didn't wait till this section because I needed it. 
Okay, so I'm going to graph, and I know there are 2 pi over 4, 2 pi over 4, 2 pi over 4, 2 pi over 4. Pi over 4 is half of pi over 2. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. 5 pi over 4. Can anyone give us the reference angle? Which must be formed between the x-axis and the acute angle between the x-axis and the terminal side. Can anyone give us the reference angle? Yes. The reference angle is pi over 4. Forty-five. Any questions? Forty-five, we are given negative 150 degrees. Okay. I have to go the other way. I know that this is negative 180. Starting here, standard position, this will be negative 180. But I have to stop short of that. How many degrees short of that? Yes, yeah, so I'm dividing this into three equal parts, and this is it. So this is the angle, negative 150 degrees. The acute angle formed between the x-axis and the terminal side is always the reference angle. How much is the reference angle? Yes, and it's always considered a positive angle. Use the reference angle to find the exact value of each expression. Do not use a calculator. Last set from this section. 61 through 74. You choose. Sixty-three. Sixty-three. Tangent to ten. Very good. In this problem, we are specifically asked to find tangent. Nothing else. We're not asked to find the other trade functions have to picture this. This is a positive angle. I know that this is 180 degrees. How much more I'm going further? 30. So this is 210 degrees. Now can anyone give us the reference angle? The reference angle is 30 degrees. Now I need the sine of tangent in the third quadrant, where both sine and cosine have the same sign. What will be the sine of tangent? Right, pa negative, right? Because they're both negative here. X and Y are negative here, which means sine and cosine are negative here, and the ratio must be positive, right? So I know now that tangent 210 is positive. I'm making a point. That's the only difference, right? Positive tangent 30 degrees and you should say but you told me not to find not to learn tangent yes I specifically told you do not learn tangent or memorize tangent 30 because I know that this is sine 30 over cosine 30 and this is sine 30 is the first upper left corner the young, the smallest angle the first number that we talked about very good then the cosine has to be the other one by the other one, I mean 3 over 2. So then 1 half multiplied by 2 over the square root of 3 is 1 over the square root of 3. And if I rationalize, I get the square root of 3 over 3. Please choose another. I'd like to do at least one more. Hopefully two, if we have time. And then I'll stop. Anyone? Okay, I will choose um, cosine 3 pi over 4. Oh, uh, the problem is 68. Cosine 3 pi over 4. Always remember something pi over 4 is not difficult, right? Because it's easy to divide the circle and so on and so forth. Okay, which quadrant is 3 pi over 4 in? In the? Yes, in the? Yes. I have to rationalize. 
So this is square root of 3 and this is 3. Which quadrant is 3 pi over 4? 1, 2, 3 pi over 4. Right in the middle of the second one. So this is 3 pi over 4. Now, can anyone identify for us the uh, reference angle? This is the reference angle, which is pi over 4. Right, or 45, correct. The sine of cosine in the second quadrant, we measure it on the x-axis. So the sine of cosine in the second quadrant is? Negative. Good. So that would be negative cosine of the reference angle. Now remember the little chart because cosine is right in the middle and both sine and cosine for that angle are the same. So what is the number in the middle of the chart? That's it. Okay, we have time for one more, please. Here's another. 69, cosecant 7, pi over 6. Cosecant is the same with... Very good. Because it starts with C, this one must start with S. I'm, I'm That's still okay. trying to learn. That's okay. That's okay. My car in here. It takes time. It takes time. That's why I want to finish this and review again. Okay. Now, 7 pi over 6. Oh, pi over 6 is 30 degrees. 7 times 30 degrees is 210. So this is 180. How much more do I go? 30. Good. So this angle is 7 pi over 6. Can anyone identify the, uh, the reference angle for me, please? Pi over. Good. Right, it's 30 degrees. Very good. So now, what is the sine of sine in the third quadrant where both are negative? Negative. So this is negative 1 over sine 30 degrees. But I know sine 30 degrees is at the top of the, of, the, of the chart. The little angle, the top, the first angle sine. One half. So this is negative one half. I flip and I get this. 